Now, Miss Cook, you must be one of Britain's only roads, women road sweepers. Well, for a start, call me AIM. AIM. Everybody else do. OK, then, are you one of Britain's only road sweepers, women the, road sweepers? I'm the only one in all of Gloucestershire. After 26 years, 1939, when war broke out, I did the advertisement in the newspaper, and our dad said, to well, I said, if he can't do that as good as some of the men, I said, that's a poor job. Well, I thought myself, well, I wouldn't let the old man down, so I had a go. That's 1939, and I'm still going strong. Now, you obviously believe in keeping up the good old Gloucestershire accent. I do, and, and yours one is going to, too. They can talk posh as they like. I can talk posh if I want to. I can say, good afternoon, and how are you? And I can say, good afternoon, and hope it's thee. My father did go to work down on the farm all day and come home at night, and then if it was a moonlight night, of course he had an acre of ground planted to wheat. Well, that acre of wheat did keep weeing bread, you see, to grow the wheat for bread. And then the other acre was planted to potatoes, strawberries and kidney beans and all things like that, perhaps for my mother to sell. Well, then he had to keep some pigs to have the manure to put on the ground. And at moonlight of the night, I used to have to lead the donkey free to wheel the bar up the ground because there's a stipe and put this manure on. Well, then out of that acre of wheat, we growed there. He'd put that in a little puck, as we did call it. And then we did go to Leeson and pick up a lot for Leeson, go right up on the Simmelsle Downs, 40 acres or 50 acre field, and come back with a good load of wheat, all tight and nice bunches, and slicked out. And then with that, and the acres father growed, it nearly keep us a year in bread. We did take it down to Nibley Green and have it grown into flour. And Father did have the uh, Branford's Piggies and the straw to Thatcher's Rick. And he did uh, thresh the wheat out with a froil over his head. And of course, of a frosty night, they, in them days, they used to get the pickaxe and grub the frosty ground up on end. Well, then when did come some nice weather, you know, a thaw that had worked beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then we did help dig, up, dig and plant the potatoes. Well, and then uh, the boys did go and mine the crows off the wheat. There's none of that today for half a crown. Well, that's all they did get, you see, when they did go to work. And the mothers and fathers, they had to keep them boys on half a crown to eat. Well, my earliest recollection of school games, Lionel wasn't in this because I don't know whether he was born then or not, <laughs> but uh, my earliest recollections are uh, down at the infant school, in circles, going round singing, Old Rubbishy Bishop, Old Rubbishy Bishop. Now, Miss Bishop was our headmistress down there, and she used to come and join in the circle. It didn't make any difference to oh, her she was its she was headmistress while I was at school there, and I can certainly remember all that. Oh, well, that's all right. Then then he, he's old enough. I didn't know he was quite as old as that. There was Shepherd Tidmarsh. Now, he was a, he was a wonderful man, Shepherd Tidmarsh. I always thought he was a man and a half. What he, what he didn't know about sheep, well, it wasn't worth bothering about. He had his thumbnails a bit on the long side for getting the maggots out of the sheep, you see. He grew them specially for that. He never cut his thumbnails very much for maggot in the sheep, you see. He'd got about three teeth at the front, which uh, he used to use for castrating the lambs, and they came in very handy. He drew the, he did the castration with his teeth, you see. And then another spare time job of his was doctoring cats. He used to put a pair of steel spectacles on the end of his nose, and he looked real professional when he was doing that. <laughs> All right, you want me to sing? But I uh, uh, think that old song as Tommy Smith used to, called The Village Pump. Uh, there's a pretty little village far away Where they grow potatoes, corn and hay There's a trickling little rill which drives a little mill And the mill keeps a working all the day there's a lot of little houses in a lump And a pub called the Magpie on the Stump 
Now if you walk that way, listen to what I say, for the pride of all the village is the pump. It's the pump, the village pump. It's the pump, 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 pump. It's the pump, the village pump. And the pride of all the village is the pump, pump, pump. Morning. Let me have two gowns, please. Two, sir. Yes, please. <laughs> Mrs. Crewe, Mrs. Barry Crewe, how old are you? I'm, uh, I shall be 81 the 20th of December. Well, that's a fairly advanced age to be doing the petrol pumps, isn't it? Well, as long as you are able to do it, it's quite nice work. You meet a lot of nice uh, people, they have a chat to you, and that do uh, pass the time away. Now, in the old days, the way you got petrol was different from today. Oh, yes, I started in cans. My husband didn't want me to start, but I said, yes, I am. And I started, and then we went from cans to a barrel. Now, how much was petrol in those days? Well, as far as I can remember, it was uh, about one and five pence eight, I that think. Was the, the gallon. Mm -hmm. That would have been uh, about two and uh, ten, I think it was, for two gallons, as far as I can remember mine. And, of course, then after we uh, put it in, in cans, we uh, thought, well, we'll have two pumps. This one here is a modern pump. Yeah. It can be turned into electric if it's wanted, but the other one isn't. The first lot of pumps I bought was pumps. <laughs> these, what I call artificial pumps. Well, these more modern ones, you mean? Yeah. But the first lot as I bought was freeze pump. And you had the handle in it was quite easy. They had a semi roachy and they had a big glass container at the top. You would pump your petrol one, two, three, four, or five, and it did overflow back to the tank. More straightforward than what it is today. It's like everything else. It's uh, mad jack today, you know. The sun went down behind yon hills across yon dreary moors. When weary and lame, a boy then came up to the farmer's door. Now can you tell me of any there be that to me will find employ for to plow and to sow, reap and mow, and be a farmer's boy, and to be a farmer's boy? That's a man of 70 years of age singing that. He used to go down to Swansea and sing there, sing all the carols, and and the mummers used to come in and have a mummers, you know, in the, in the pub and oh, sing, have a sing song all the way around, you know, make us off at home. Oh, we had very good times, very good times indeed. You get enough beer into it, and the old woman would say, oh, <coughs> try a drop of my wine, and then you would have some black currant wine and gooseberry wine and some, and I even damned if you wasn't a gentleman. Oh, knock it straight out. Oh, knock it straight out. Used to call it Stunham. Used to call it Stunham, you know. <laughs> 